Thank you, Holy Spirit. Wow. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for your word today. <gasps> oh, glory. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. Man, oh man, you guys, I am really excited to bring this word of the Lord to you today. So I am going to just wait for everybody to hop on. This is a powerful word from the Lord. And my goodness, you guys are going to be so blessed, so encouraged, and so empowered by the Holy Spirit today. Welcome, Jennifer and Garrett. Lisa, welcome. All of you who are coming on, welcome. <laughs> oh my goodness. So what I want to tell you, um, if you notice, I have a beautiful backdrop here, a gorgeous, let's see if you can see this. Look at this gorgeous tree and look at all the beautiful light piercing out of this tree. This is so gorgeous. I have got to get one of these for my house, I tell you. So I am in Rainsville, Alabama, and the Lord told me to come out Saturday, and it was incredibly divinely orchestrated by the Holy Spirit. And I want to let you guys know that um, this is so beautiful that Kingdom Collaborations that the Lord was having me prophesy about for all of us right now, these kingdom collaborations, these covert alliances for Christ that is taking place, like the Lord had me prophesy that word during Pentecost celebration on uh, June the 9th, and it's happening. There are amazing kingdom collaborations happening. So I went with, um, actually I went by myself, but I went on a road trip and I came out here to be a part of what Tyler Frick was stepping out to do with the Lord. And let me tell you, it was so powerful. I was incredibly honored to be a part of how the Spirit of God was moving through Tyler um, and what the Lord has, has him, you know, carry and, and bring forth in different cities and different regions. It was just incredible. So I got to be part of some amazing things, some covert assignments of literally taking ground, taking authority over principalities over the land, and just honoring and prophesying over um, specific people um, that have such a key role in this area and in this city. So it was incredible. So I'll just tell you that um, that was amazing. And um, I'm going to be here until tomorrow, and then I'm going to drive back to Kentucky and um, get some things established for the end of July with Abba's Athletes. But I want to tell you what the Spirit of God revealed to me today. It was really beautiful in an, an open vision, and the Lord began to show me some things. And then just about an hour ago, the Holy Spirit quickened me, and He began to give me a vision that went so much deeper, and this is about what the what the Lord is doing to your enemy. This is about what is what is literally taking place with your enemy, right? The spiritual battle you are about to experience some great uh, some great recompense. You're going to see restitution take place, and it is absolutely Proverbs chapter six verse thirty one. So, again, uh, there's been amazing things that have been happening, and uh, I just got to tell you that um, I got to be a part of just a great move of God, and the Lord just gave me such an incredible love for uh, the, the people here in Rainsville, Alabama, and what God is birthing out here, how God is moving out here, and just seeing these collaborations is just incredible. So, 
I hope you guys are having a blessed weekend and I'm really excited to deliver this word today. Okay, I'm going to break this down because there are a couple of revelations that the Holy Spirit wants to release. So before I start, again, I want to welcome every one of you who are just now coming on. And Father, I just thank you right now. I thank you for your presence. I thank you for your sweet presence. And Lord, I thank you for the blood of the Lamb that just completely saturates the atmosphere. And Lord, that you just completely shut any door of demonic activity so that your word can be delivered in spirit and in truth with no distractions in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Lord. Okay, so some of you probably have seen that the word of the Lord is you are getting served or you're getting served, okay? That is the word of the Lord. You're getting served. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break down the revelation of this prophetic word and what it means to you, what it means for you. So the first part of this word is about a vision that I saw this morning. And this morning, I literally saw the Lord and it was very intimate, it was very beautiful. And he began to speak to me as he was setting the table and he had such an incredible desire to serve, right? There was a desire in the Lord's heart to serve me and to serve others. It was a very intimate moment. And the Lord began to say to me that there are many people that are so used to serving others that they don't really understand how to be served. They haven't been able to open up to really recognize that they deserve to be served. And so the Lord was speaking to me about those that are involved in ministry and those that are so focused on constantly, um, you know, feeling obligated to serve, to serve, to serve in whatever capacity that is, but they forget one very serious uh, revelation and truth is you have to come to the serving table. Okay, this is what I'm going to minister about right now. The Lord said, there is a serving table. And he said, it's my table. And you have to come to my table and allow me to serve you, to serve you the capacity of what is in my heart that I want to serve you and that I need to serve you in order for you to then step out and serve others. And this has been something that has been so just disconnected from a lot of people is that they're so focused on, I have to serve, I have to do this, I've got to do this, and I've got to do this, and they forget the most important part that really causes them to struggle because they're missing it. It's the main ingredient, it's the foundation of having a heart to serve, which is literally being in the presence of the Lord and allowing the Lord to serve you, right? To serve them. So the Lord is saying in this season for some of you that have been depleted, that have been frustrated, that have been overwhelmed, that have been overworked, that this is a time where Jesus is wooing you and calling you to the serving table, to the place where he wants to nurture you and he wants to pour into you and Jesus wants to literally serve you. He wants to serve you what's on his plate. He wants to serve you what's on his heart. He wants to serve you the very necessary things that you need in order to be revitalized, rejuvenated, strengthened, and focused on those places that he's called you to serve others, okay? So this is why the Lord told me the importance of soaking in the secret garden, of recognizing the importance of being with the Lord and opening your heart 
to allow the Lord to serve you, okay? Here is an example of Jesus serving. When Jesus went to wash the disciples' feet, and the disciple, and I don't remember what name was, if it was Peter, if it was Matthew, I don't remember which disciple in the word, but that disciple was like, wait a minute, I'm unworthy. Like, why would you be, why, I, I should be washing your feet, right? The disciple was telling Jesus, wait a minute, I need to wa- I, I, I need to serve you. Like, and, and, and I believe in that moment, Jesus actually rebuked that disciple to say, right? You need to let me wash your feet and serve you. Because you need, you need me to serve you. You need me to wash, to cleanse, to nurture you, and to fill you with everything that you need to function properly in the earth, right? So it was a very intimate, vulnerable moment, a very intimate, vulnerable moment for that disciple of the Lord to say, wait a minute, like, I'm too unworthy for you to wash my feet. Like, I'm supposed to be serving you. Why would you even get down on your knees and wash my feet? Like, you're the Lord. I'm, I'm supposed to be your servant, right? And I think many people come to that place where they don't recognize the covenant relationship with Christ and how much Jesus loves to serve. Jesus loves to serve. He loves to nurture us. He loves to serve us. He loves to set the table. He loves to come out and give us new wine and give us bread. He's the bread of life. He loves to come and literally give us the substance of all that he is. He loves to to serve. And that's something that a lot of people are missing. So the Lord is saying that He is going to move mightily in this season and bring many people into that moment where Jesus is saying, I'm going to kneel down and I'm going to wash your feet and I'm going to serve you and I need you to completely become vulnerable, to completely open up your heart and allow me to come in to serve you because what I'm serving you is so holy and beautiful and life changing. So I really feel like that is for some of you that you need to hear. So the word is you're getting served. Okay. You're getting served. This is about the secret place. This is about some of you who are involved in ministry, but you're so used to all the routines and things that you've forgotten the importance of actually being served by the Lord. So focused on, I've got to serve others and then forgetting the importance of being served by the Lord and what that really means. Because what the Lord serves to you will become an outflow to his people. That is, that is so important. And a lot of people, this is what is missing. This is so missing in a lot of ministries because their mindset is, I'm serving. I'm just reading the word. Okay. All right, God. Okay. I'm hearing from you. Okay. Let's just prophesy and let's just, you know, give the word of the Lord. And, oh, this is, this is this. And this is my mantle and yada, yada, yada. And it's like work, 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 ministry, ministry, ministry. And I'm serving and, oh, I'm going over here to serve and I'm serving over here. And all of a sudden they get so pulled away and their mindset is, I'm responsible to serve, to serve. And they lose the vulnerability and they lose the intimacy of meeting with the Lord in the secret place and being like that disciple in the moment where Jesus says, now I want to serve you. Now I want you to let go of everything and allow me to serve you, to wash your feet, to set the table, and to give you the substance that I need to serve you. So that is one of the revelations right now that the Lord is speaking to my heart 
And we're just scratching the surface right now, okay? I'm gonna dive in even more to give you an understanding of what it means to come to the serving table, to come to the serving table and to literally sit, right? And to receive from the Lord and allowing the Lord to come and to literally serve you. And what that experience is like so that you get out of this mindset that I'm called to serve, I'm called to serve, I'm called to serve, I'm called to serve, and you just, you know, you become like a, a workhorse and you lose sight of the intimacy that you need to receive, allowing Jesus to come to serve you what you need, right? That's holy to stop everything when Jesus wants to interrupt everything in your life to just put a holy hush and just like make everything come to a standstill walk right into your life and say I've come to wash your feet I've come to wash your feet I've come to stop you from from to stop you from from moving any further because I've come to wash your feet. I've seen the journey that you've been on, but I need you to not lose sight of our intimacy and our relationship together because a covenant marriage is about two people that serve each other. And what is missing and what I feel really strongly from the Holy Spirit right now, the Lord is saying is, what happens is when people become church-minded, when they become church-minded, they lose sight of the other half of their spouse, which is Christ. Meaning that I serve the Lord, but they forget that the Lord says, and I serve my beloved, right? A husband and wife serve each other. They honor each other. And so the Lord is saying that he's coming into many covenant relationships in this season to say, you're so focused on serving me, but it's time for you to become vulnerable and open for me as your beloved bridegroom to serve you in the capacity that I want to serve you, that I want to take you into some deep, intimate places and, and serve you. There are areas that I want to touch. There are areas that I want to move and serve you in ways that you've never experienced because some places you've never become vulnerable enough to allow me to serve you in those areas. Your heart would be closed off because you have a mindset that I'm responsible for serving, but yet not being vulnerable enough to be served. Okay. So this is where the Lord is ministering and he's speaking about a whole nother level of intimacy where you're not focused on just serving the Lord, but you are allowing the Lord to come in and to serve you. And that is what I saw. I saw Jesus and he was setting the table. And I've often been to this place in heaven where I've literally come to the serving table of the Lord. And I've literally seen the Lord and I've seen the smile on his face. I've seen him as a stature of a groom, okay? I've seen the stature of Christ in heaven with just so much romance, so much passion and desire to serve his bride. And it's very intimate. It's very um, sacred. And I could tell you that I could feel his heart and his incredible excitement and his love to serve his beloved, but there are so many of his that don't take the time to allow him to serve in the capacity that he wants to serve his beloved. And so they miss out on the most incredible experiences because they keep that covenant one-sided. And, you know, I've heard this often, like in a you know, when, when, when you hear like, oh, this relationship is one-sided because I'm just, you know, I'm giving, I'm giving, I'm giving, right? And they're not giving anything back. But it's interesting in a covenant relationship with Christ where 
the church mindset is I'm constantly serving. I'm just answering my call and I'm, and I'm, I'm doing what I'm called to do. But forgetting the other side of the incredible chemistry and the incredible spiritual um, secret garden and the sacred places and the heavenly places where we really get to know what is literally in the heart of Christ for us and how Christ wants to serve us. And so, again, this is a season the Lord is saying, you're getting served. Like, I'm getting ready to take you to a vulnerable place where you're going to recognize those areas where you have not, you, you, your mind has been more focused on serving me than, a, than taking the time to come into the secret place with me so that I can serve you. That I can open up my heart and give you what I desire to give you because that's what sets your heart on fire. That's what fans the flame when you not only express your heart, right? But, and, and then you just say, oh Lord, oh Lord, okay, thank you. And then bye. Like, but you take the time to allow the spirit of God to fully express his heart to you and to nurture you and to serve you. So I believe in this season, a lot of you are going to come into a place of true, deep healing when it comes to being vulnerable with the Lord and open to the many facets of his love and how he wants to serve you. Okay, so that is the first revelation that I wanted to to release because that was the vision the Lord showed me and it was very sacred and very holy. And he wanted me to share that with you first because the second revelation about your getting served is really exciting because this statement is actually God the Father speaking out now to the enemy, to Satan, right? And he's and, and I'm going to tell you what I saw in a vision and how powerful it was. And what I saw was, I saw Satan getting served, court documents being summoned to the courtroom because of a lawsuit. Okay? This is what I saw. It was so powerful. So you guys, this is, this is a powerful word. So the Lord is talking about getting served, which is a level of intimacy that you're going to have with Jesus in this season. But also he's letting you know that your enemy is getting served legal documents from the courtroom of heaven. And I'm going to give you the definition of what it means to get served. Okay. This is what I saw. I am so ecstatic about this. And then I'm going to uh, dive into, uh, the scripture from Proverbs 6, chapter 31, that's going to be so exciting for you guys because I was like, wow. Okay, so let me look at this right here. When it says to get served, a legal document basically means like you're getting a lawsuit, right? And then one of the things that it said was getting a lawsuit for a debt collection. Okay. And I heard the Lord say that I want you to know that the enemy is getting an announcement by my spirit. You're getting served. And the announcement to your enemy is you are getting served court documents to appear in my courtroom because you need to pay debt you owe debt, and guess what you owe? Sevenfold, sevenfold to my sons and daughters. So I'm just telling you that you're getting served. So there's a lawsuit against you because my sons and daughters have been awakened to their legal authority and their God-given jurisdiction. Now they're getting the revelation. So they've come before me and they've given me, they've, they've literally given me their, their, their case. They pleaded their case. And now what's going on is there's a lawsuit. There's a lawsuit against your enemy. 
and they're getting served the court documents and it says it's for debt, debt collection, the debt that is owed, what Satan has to give sevenfold. And so I look this up, I look this up and it's Proverbs chapter six, verse 31. And it says, yet if he, which is referring to the thief, if he is caught, he must pay sevenfold, though it costs him all the wealth of his house. Okay, that's the scripture. Now, let me tell you guys. So, you know how I love, I love Pour It Out Ministry. That's where the Lord led me to get those numbers. I had a friend of mine a few years back, and he sent me this link. And it was to an awesome ministry and they give you deep biblical revelation of these specific numbers when you see 222, 333 and so on and so on, right? Well, guess what? I look up sevenfold return and it happens to be there's a page on pour it out ministries. So this is awesome. So I thought that I would read this to you because I think we need to understand that our enemy is getting served and they Satan has to literally appear before the courtroom of heaven because God is fixing to release recompense and justice for all the injustice and Satan has to pay the debt that he owes. Oh, all the damage, all the stuff that happened, he's getting served. He's getting served, right? There are angelic, Hosts, they are those legal officials, okay? They are those legal officials. This is a scripture I gave you guys um, probably months ago, which was 2 Kings chapter 8. Remember, I was talking about the Shulamite woman who literally came before the king, right, to appeal her case, to say, I've come back from my land, my home and my land, my property. And the king said, give her back her land, but... Pay her the income from the day that she left to the day that she returned. That was seven years. And seven is about the sevenfold blessing, the sevenfold return. And the number seven is very powerful. But I want to read this to you because this is what God is saying. Our enemy is getting served. Our enemy is getting served. And the, the enemy's got to pay sevenfold through the courts of heaven He's got debt that he has to now pay. Now let's talk about the detail of the debt that Satan owes, okay? Because he's getting served. So that's what I wanted to tell you. Like in the scripture when it talked about the official, right? Assigned to that woman's case, that was representing like the angelic host, right? To say, okay, go make sure you go. I'm going to send you forth, right? Because because they need to get their stuff. So I'm going to make sure you go forth and they get their stuff back. So he signed, the, he signed an official, which is that angelic army, the heavenly host, right? They're all a part of the courtroom of heaven. They're standing around there and they, they go at the sound of God's voice and at his command, right? So this is what's happening. This is what's happening. The enemy is getting served some court documents for debt, that he has to now pay. All right. So if you're just joining me, I'm talking about Proverbs chapter six, verse 31. But if he, the thief is caught, he must pay back seven times what he stole, even if he has to sell everything in his house. Okay. Let's break down the sevenfold return. Again, I'm reading this from pouritoutministries.org because this is amazing, resourceful information. It says sevenfold return. As we enter a new prophetic season of double portion and restitution, there is restoration for you. As you lean into previous words that God has spoken over your destiny and believe for harvest, there is a divine restitution that is being poured out. Even a sevenfold return. This restitution speaks to any sphere of where a stealing of promise has taken place, such as relationship and family in family connection, health, finances, and wealth creation, reputation, creative output, strategic initiatives, and ministry or business resourcing and favor. Oh my God. 
Speak over these areas of your life that have been ravaged by the enemy and decree the day of divine restitution. So this is what God is pretty much saying. That we are coming into the day of divine restitution because out of the courtroom of heaven, the enemy is getting served. Legal documents, the heavenly host, have gone forth at the command of the Lord and this is the time of the move of God where you are going to experience all these supernatural sudden doors opening, things happening, they are going to happen. Now, I'm not giving you some sugar-coated prophetic word. I am telling you that I heard the Lord say that you're getting served, meaning you're coming to a place of vulnerability with the Lord himself in your intimacy with Christ, in your covenant with him. And there's healing that's going to happen because he wants to let you understand how he wants to approach and serve you and express deeper areas of his heart to you. And at the same time, your enemy is getting served. God is saying, I want you to hear when the officials come to the enemy's door, boom, 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 boom. And the enemy opens his door and the official, which is the angelic host from heaven, you've got served. You just got served. And this is, you need, you're being summoned to the courtroom of heaven because there's a lawsuit against you because you owe debt. You owe debt and it's time for the sons and daughters to collect the debt that you owe from all the damage that you've done. Uh Uh-uh. This is the day of restitution. Okay? So let me go back and just read this list again. It says... Thank you, Holy Spirit. It says, this restitution speaks to any sphere where a stealing of promise has taken place, such as relationship and family connection, health, finances, and wealth creation, reputation, creative output, strategic initiatives, and ministry or business resourcing and favor. So speak over these areas of your life that you have been ravaged by the enemy and decree your day of divine restitution has come. Okay. Thank you, Holy Spirit. All right. I'm going to read even more because I feel the Lord telling me to read a little bit more. Thank you, Lord. Decree and you will see. Many have experienced a long past season where it has felt like the thief has run riot in your life, finances, and family. But a new season is upon you. Sevenfold return. We are crossing into new breakthrough where the thief's strategies are being revealed so as to break off his hold and restitution of that which was lost is taking place. Agree with heaven and lean into past and present promises and decree these over your life with renewed hope. It's a time for hope to rise as we taste and see the sweetness of divine restoration. The thief has been found out in this hour. There it is. The thief has been found out in this hour. The one that broke into your house, uh uh-huh. The one that came into your soul. The one that caused damage. The one that took control over relationships in your life, over finances in your life, over uh, wealth creation and strategies, all this stuff. Listen, the thief has been found out in this hour and God is breathing fresh invigoration to you many have almost given up hope of restoration hope again the spirit would say you will taste and see decree the spirit would say decree and you will see thank you Holy Spirit first the thief is found out then the restitution takes place Fresh revelation is yours as God is revealing hidden tactics of the enemy and shining light on strategies that have brought ruin and demise for far too long. 
recognizing this is half the battle. So what is the Lord saying? He is absolutely revealing to you that the thief that came to rob you in your house has been caught, has been caught and there is a move of God where the enemy is getting served legal documents from the courtroom of heaven by the angelic host assigned to your life and your case. And the enemy is being summoned to the courtroom of heaven because he has debt that he has to pay. He has debt that will be collected. And that means relationships Every relationship, family situations, business, ministry, all aspects of everything in your life concerning your promise and your destiny. And this is what God is saying. Your day of restitution is upon you. Proverbs chapter 6 verse 31. Your thief has been found out and God is on the move. He's getting served. He's getting served. All right, let me continue here again. What I wanted to share with you is some resourceful information from Pour It Out Ministries. I love them. They're awesome. And what they're saying is this. The thief has moved under the cover of darkness, but that which was hidden is being revealed as the glory of God is increasing in your life. This is allowing for new prayer strategies and sudden turn arounds. Confusion and fear are being conquered in this season as we gain the upper hand in prayer. Where the enemy has seemed to move with little resistance, prayer warriors and strategic worship hotspots are rising all over the nations Woo! that are combating and obliterating the enemy's strongholds. Breakthrough worship and revival hotspots are increasing. Whoa! Glory to God! I felt that. Woo! They're increasing. Expect to receive revelation. Oh my God. Decree. 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 It's a powerful tool in the spiritual arsenal releasing breakthrough. That's your spiritual arsenal is decreeing the word of the Lord. Through worship. Intercession. My God. Okay. All right. Let me, let me read this part here. Perfecting and completing the sevenfold return. We're in the sevenfold return. This is why I'm sharing this with you because this is the word of the Lord. I mean, I'm so excited to know that the Lord showed me the vision of the look on Satan's face when he gets served court documents from heaven and he has to literally by the command of the Lord, appear in his courtroom because he owes debt. <laughs> oh my God! That's a, he just got summoned. There's a lawsuit against him and he has to appear in court. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I would be jumping, hooting and a hollering. <laughs> Oh my God, can you just see it? Can you just see it? He thinks he got away with everything, how he stole stuff from you. Oh, and God just said, uh-uh. Okay, let me just remind you of my word when I said to my sons and daughters, thank you, Holy Ghost. Yet, oh, if he the thief is caught, he must pay sevenfold. If he the thief is caught, he must pay sevenfold. If he, the thief, is caught, he must pay sevenfold. Well, guess what? He's been caught. <laughs> he's been caught. And he's getting served the lawsuit from your intercession, from your prayers, right? There's a lawsuit that's been released and he's got to appear in the courtroom because there's a debt collection, a debt that is owed, and he's got to pay it. He's got to give it. All right? So here, let me read this again. This is so good. Ah, man. Okay. It's encouraging. Okay, poured out ministries. Is, this is what they're writing. It's encouraging that this verse says there is a sevenfold return. I love that seven means divine perfection. Oh, 
Did you hear that? Divine perfection is manifesting in your life. Oh my gosh. Completion and rest is manifesting in your life. Why is divine perfection and completion and rest manifesting in your life? Because you're shifting and you're coming into throne room worship. You're coming into living from heavenly places where you're supposed to be seated. So if you're seated in heavenly places and you live from that seat in heavenly places, then divine perfection and completion and rest is yours. Because everything functions from that place in heaven where you're sitting in the atmosphere of his presence and his glory and he's moving. His word is working everything out in your life. Did you hear me? When you're seated in heavenly places, Jesus is the living word. So you're in his presence, in his glory, seated at the right hand of the father in Christ And he's the living word and he's telling you what to decree, what you hear and what you see from heaven within the presence of God. So the living word is working everything out for you. The living word is divinely perfecting you. The living word is bringing completion and rest in your life. Woo! Okay. Okay, in this season, the restitution being poured out is a completion of every good work. Every good work that the Lord said he would complete and he would finish in you. Every good work that the Lord said he would complete and finish in me, right? He's he's finishing and completing the good work that he needs to finish and complete in you in your life and in my life. Philippians 1 verse 6. And a divine perfecting of destiny purposes over your life. A God designed perfecting and completing. It's a time to rest in this blessing and God breathe restitution that is coming increasingly upon his sons and daughters. Decree this completion. This is what God is saying even today. He's instructing you today. Decree my completion and spiritual perfecting over your life. God is brilliantly equipped to turn what looks impossible and forever lost into a new era of blessing and restitution that will so surpass the past season that all the sting of loss will be removed. Did you hear that? All the sting of loss will be removed and replaced with new joy. It's a season of completed restoration. It's not just a season of restoration. It's a season of completed restoration. Not half, but completion. God may do this in a way you are not suspicious. Or suspecting or least suspect, suspecting, but he will bring breakthrough and restitution. All right. Woo! Now, so I'm telling you what the Spirit of God is saying. This is the season you are now going to experience your sevenfold return. Glory to God. Your sevenfold return return is coming to you. It is your day. Listen, the day of restitution, your enemy's been served. Satan has to pay the debt that he owes from everything that he stole from you concerning destiny purpose in your life. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. So you guys, if you want this, I will give you the link so you can personally Take this link from Poured Out Ministries and spend time with the Lord reading this, digesting this truth, and opening your mouth and decreeing your sevenfold blessing, your day of restitution upon you, and the divine perfecting and the completion and the rest 
that God is establishing in your life. Okay? Here's the last thing that is said. Because again, the enemy is hearing from the Lord, you've been, you're getting served. Where you have been most attacked, and I often minister about this, wherever you're most attacked, you will have great breakthrough, right? Everybody knows this, right? You know that the areas you're most attacked is the areas God's going to give you the most breakthrough. Why? Because that's a part of your gifting. Satan is only going to attack you where he knows the gift of God is alive in you. And he doesn't want that gift of God to be birthed, to be unleashed. Because he knows that the gift of God in you is glorifying the Lord and revealing the heart of the Father and the kingdom. Okay? So he's going to attack the area of your life that you are actually gifted to conquer in Christ. Oh, He's going to attack the area in your life that you are gifted and called to be a voice of his influence in the earth. Okay? So you got to pay attention to these things. But guess what God is saying? All those places that Satan attacked you where you've been gifted, this is the day of your sevenfold return. This is the day that he's getting served. And now Satan's going to have to appear before the courtroom of the righteous judge. And he's going to get everything legally documented and stated. You have to pay. Now you got to pay. Now you got to pay seven times, seven times, seven times, seven what you stole from my son and what you stole from my daughter. It's payback time. Woo, my God. Okay. I could prophesy so much more, but right now I've actually just got a few more minutes, but I wanted to connect with you guys because I love you. You guys are my tribe and I want you to know that I'm serious about what I'm doing. I am humbled and honored to be a voice of influence, to allow the Holy Spirit to be a leader through me, to be a voice of truth, to teach, to coach, to inspire, to empower, to impact. And to see him release his winds of change so that you can step into the fullness of your God-given inheritance. And so I'm telling you, the enemy just got, just got what you call subpoenaed, right? He just got served legal documents from the courtroom of heaven and your name is on it because a lawsuit has been released. It's not pending anymore. It's being served. He's getting it. It's There's nothing pending. This is the time that Satan's been served. And now sevenfold. I hear the Holy Ghost and I feel the fire of the Holy Spirit. Your sevenfold return is upon you now because the thief has been found out. And now he has got to pay. Oh, Jesus. So you get to experience a season of true intimacy with the Lord. You get to come into this place where you're not feeling PTSD from the battlefield. You're not feeling anxious. You're not feeling heaviness, but you're feeling the freedom and you're feeling the wooing and the drawing of the Lord to come to his serving table so that he can serve you and that you can be at rest. That you can be at rest. Glory to God. Whoo! Okay, guys, I love you. I am going to actually post this link so every one of you can click on the link and that you can copy and paste the link so that you can literally read this and just spend time with the Lord. Spend time with Jesus and allow this to really minister to you and just really encourage you and inspire you and open up your mouth to make the decree of the Lord. Because I'm telling you, Satan, Satan literally heard, you've just been served, right? You've just been served. The, the heavenly hosts, the angelic army, they're so excited. They're like, oh my God, we're taking you to court. You got to come to the courtroom because you have been summoned 
by the judge. Oh my God. Woo! All right, guys. I love you. I'm going to be home. Um, I think it's the 16th, right? And then I'm going to talk about our soaking in the secret garden. So I will be starting an opening of uh, a night of introducing um, so much of what we're going to be doing in this group. And it's all about soaking in his presence, all about intimacy, and all about learning how to be served by the Lord. How to literally allow Jesus to minister to you, to serve you. Okay? That's the secret garden. That's the secret garden. Okay? And it's going to be incredible. I'm expecting amazing things to take place in soaking in the secret garden. So... And then I am going to, um, I believe once I get home, I will have the exact date for our launch day, our registration day for Obis athletes. And for those of you who've already enrolled, I will give you an email. You'll be getting an email from me giving you some updated information and you will get all the ABCs of, you know, logging in with your name and your email and knowing exactly how to register. So you're gonna get all the information and then you're gonna get the link to connect to Abba's Athletes Facebook group for weekly group coaching for all my students. So I'm really so excited and stoked about all the Holy Spirit is doing. And many of you are in a transition. And listen, I wanna pray a blessing over you because I really feel that many of you are in a transition and you've been a little shaky concerning finances. You've been a, maybe a little bit scared because God is calling you. He's stretching you and he's calling you out into a place you've not been, you've not been active or it's not familiar to you. So it's a little, you're a little shaky, right? But I just want to pray that the shalom of the Lord rests upon you and that you know that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And that you know when you respond to the voice of the Father and you have a heart of obedience, you will eat the good of the land. So I want to remind you, when you listen to the Father and you take that step of obedience, He will provide for you and bless you beyond what you could even imagine. God is faithful. He's a father who takes full responsibility to provide for his sons and daughters. When they are obedient, when they listen to him, he absolutely, he's obligated to take care of his kids. So I just want to encourage you to tell you that everything is going to be more than okay you are going to receive the provision from the Lord. You are going to see the door open because you're listening to the words that the Lord himself has spoken. Okay? Let me repeat that. You are going to see the door open because you're listening to the words that the Lord has spoken. When you have a heart of obedience, you will see the abundance. A heart of obedience receives a harvest of abundance in every facet that comes out of the Father. Financially, physically, in your health, relationally, it's all about obedience, okay? So concerning your finances, be at peace, trust the Father, and just stay yielded to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. I love you guys. Shalom. God bless you.